I'm going to show you how to use extrusions to make 3D objects out of everyday items. And to follow along, let's go to Working Files and open up Photoshop Projects and then open up Bottle Silhouette. I made this silhouette from a photograph that I downloaded online. I simply selected the bottle, filled it with black, and then deleted the background. I'm starting here in Silhouette because it's not a good idea to show logos here without permission. I also think you can probably figure out how to do a silhouette like this. What I want to do now is just extrude this. So I go to 3D Extrusion from the selected layer and click Create. And that, of course, does not create a round bottle. That creates this kind of flat looking thing like that. But we'll fix that. We'll go to Deform. We'll select the bottle silhouette like that. Go to Deform here. And we're going to wrap it around on the horizontal angle like this on itself. We get kind of a fat bottle when we do that. Let me rotate it this way. You can see this fat bottle with kind of a dimple on top like that. But we can fix that by changing the size of the extrusion. So let's just bring it down a bit. And now we've got sort of the original basic contours and shape of the bottle. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Now that we've done this, you might want to put things on the bottle, like a label and what have you. When we work with the wine bottle preset, that had three things. You could put a label down here and a top here and this glass thing here. But when you make something from a silhouette like this, it's one giant mesh. You see we have five meshes here, but only one is actually visible. The front inflation, the bevel, those are not visible. Those are tucked away inside here because we wrap things around. The only one that's visible is this extrusion material. So if I want to then, say, put a mesh on here, add some color or a label or text or something like that, it's going to be one giant thing. So it's kind of hard to figure out where to put things to make them show up here. I'm going to talk about adding materials in upcoming lessons, but I want to give you a sense for how that works now. So I've selected this extrusion material here. I'm going to go over here and click on this drop down arrow there and say, edit the texture. Now there it is right now. It's nothing. It's just gray, of course. But I want to be able to put something in there to put on the bottle. I need to get a sense of where to put things. And right now I have no idea where to put things, just this rectangular thing here. So I need to go to 3D and I say, create painting overlay, wireframe. And that shows where things are on the bottle. Now this is not obvious where things are, but this is the top right there. This is the neck down to about there. And this is the bottom actually. And over here is stuff that's tucked away inside it. So if I just fill this up, let's say, I'll go get the selection tool here, make a rectangular, just select that area, for example, just that part. It'll be on the wrong layer. So let me add a new layer. I want to put it on a separate layer there. I'm going to fill that. I'll go to Edit, Fill. I can press Shift F5. And let's put some color on there. So I'll go to Color. Pick a color like, oh, purple, that's fine. Click OK. And I'll put purple inside that section there. Now I'll turn off that wireframe there. And I'll save this by closing it down, clicking Yes when it asks me to save it. And there it is. It shows up where the top is. I could do the same kind of thing for the rest of the bottle. I could add text here. I could put a gradient if I wanted to. I could go get a label and have it as an image. All kinds of ways to put texture on this thing, even though it's just one map here for the whole bottle. All right, let's move on to some other object here. Go to File, Open. I want you to track down the bowl here inside the Photo Spin Images folder. This bowl here, looking down on it. I want to just extrude this bowl. So I need to select the bowl. I go over here to the Quick Selection tool. Click inside here and drag, and that'll select the inside of there. I want to create a layer mask Click over here. And that essentially makes the background disappear. Now I've selected just the bowl. Now I want to take that object and extrude it. So I have 3D extrusion here from the selected layer. Click Create. It won't look very bowl-like. It'll look more like a column. Let's click on it and rotate it a bit so we can get a chance to see that. Obviously not very bowl-like, right? But let's fix that. We can do a couple of things to fix that. I'm going to go over to the Deform properties here. Let's bring in the extrusion a bit. Obviously, it's too deep. And then taper it a bit. Let me rotate some more so you get a chance to get a sense for how much that is tapered. Taper it in a little bit more here. There we go. Something like that. Still isn't truly a bowl, but that's not bad. Let me rotate it again. You'll see that the back side has texture and the front has texture. But the sides, the extruded part, does not have texture. It just has that gray default texture that just looks kind of bland. But we can fill that with the wood grain. And again, I'm going to talk about materials in more detail in other lessons. But let me show you how to deal with that here. We have the extrusion selected over here now. And I want to go over here to diffuse. And I want to replace the texture. Right now the texture is this gray thing. I'll replace it. This is what are you replacing it with? Well, I'll replace it with the bowl. Double click on that. And lo and behold, it almost does the job. See, that doesn't quite fill it up. 
That's because the texture is the shape of a bowl, but this extrusion is not in the shape of a bowl. So we can fix that. So I'll go over here to diffuse, open this guy up like that and say, edit the texture. It's gonna look like this bowl, but I want it to fill the frame here. So it'll fill that extrusion. So one way to do that is to use the polar coordinates filter. So I go to filter, go down to distort, polar coordinates. And now I want to go from polar to rectangular Click on that. Let's just zoom out a bit so you can see things a little better. See that we got a little bit of a gap there, but that's okay. I'll click OK. Now I'll do Control or Command T on this guy to select the whole thing. I can't select it because it's a background layer, so I'll double click, change it to a standard layer, and now I can do Control or Command T. We can pull it down, stretch it out a little bit. So I'll just bring it down like this, maybe hold on the Shift key to make it uniform. I think that works. We'll accept that. And now I'll just save that. So, yep, I want to save it. And now the bowl will have texture all the way around it, like so. Rotate around like that. Looks pretty good, but now it's still flat on top, right? Which is not exactly what we want to have here. We want it to have some depth to it. So how do we do that? I want to pull this in. I can use a bevel to pull it in, but the bevel generally pulls it from the edges or it puts a hard edge on it. I'll show you how that works though. Let's try that out and see if that works. We've worked with bevels now, so we should be able to do some work with this thing to make that look reasonably realistic. Let me pull this over a little bit. I make sure layer is active and I go to cap and I want to go to bevel. I want to pull it in so the angle should be negative. Make it negative 40 or so right on there. And now I'm going to pull it in by adjusting the width, like the depth in this case. And that's not half bad. It's not, you know, horrible. You can adjust that edge there if you use a different contour. But let me show you another way to do this. I'm going to go back in time here a bit. I want to add an internal constraint. Let's go back to 3D here so you can see what it happens. Let's go over and get the selection tool, make it an elliptical selection tool. I'm going to draw a selection here. That's pretty good for what we're trying to accomplish here. Let it go. All right, so now we're going to go up to 3D and we're going to add a constraint from the current selection. We've done this before. If you haven't seen it, it looks like nothing happened, but we've got this new internal constraint right there. I'm going to check on that and see that it's active. So I'm going to go back to layer. I can turn off the selection by doing controller command D. Now we're going to try to do a cap for that, a bevel for that. So we'll take it inside again to a negative value, let's say negative 40 or so. And now the constraint will be involved in this bevel. So look over here and we're going to start pulling it in like so. It does cause this other stuff to happen depending on how the contour is set. Let's change the contour to something else here. We'll go down and make a little bit softer contour. by pulling these guys down a little bit. Try that instead, see how that looks. Maybe having the angle be not quite so deep like that, softer angle. Click on this and select it and rotate it a bit. And pull it in a little bit farther, like so, a little bit more like that. But you can see how the constraint can give you a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a rim, rather than using the bevel to do that. So there are a couple of ways to deal with something like this where you've got a bowl and you want to kind of bring it inside like that. So there are just a couple of examples of how you can take an everyday object and extrude it into a 3D shape that you can work with here inside Photoshop.